Here at the Proax Stadium today, I'm about to meet Chris Turner, a former player, a former manager, currently a chief executive here of Chesterfield Football Club. Chris, you've been in the game a long time. You've been a player, you've been a manager, you're now an administrator. Have you seen changes in referees over that time? What were they like when you first started playing? <coughs> Massive changes, I think. I think one of the biggest... Um... Uh, changes now the, within the game is is being able to talk to referees uh, and have a bit of banter with them. Uh, I think they are too uh, they're, they're too highly strung, they're frightened to referee the game um, how they feel it should be. I think they're under too much uh, pressure to to run the game how it's set out in terms of rules uh, and you know the obvious ones um, are. Uh, allowing the game to flow. Nowadays, uh, people are diving on the floor and it's just breaking up the, feel the, 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 the game itself. And I just feel that referees are frightened not to make the major mistakes in the game, which are the obvious ones, penalty decisions or ball going over the line, which have been recently highlighted. But I think the ones where a shove in the back, a pull in the shirt, not being 10 yards, the sticklers to all that, whereas in the days gone by, they let the game flow a lot more and you could have a chat with them. So you're saying they're too rigid mm. with the, the laws and the... And, and the well, I, 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 think, I think also you, you're getting a lot of... <clears throat> I think we're the only industry where people run our game on a, on a Saturday afternoon with people who've never played the game and they don't understand it. You can see before an incident happens what's going to happen because you've been involved in the game for a, a number of years and played it, that the referee doesn't see it because he's never played it. And doesn't, he doesn't see it from both, both sides of, of, of the plane. Instead, you, know, you see incidents where you can see there's going to be a clash. There's a clash, the balls break free, somebody's picked it up, let the game go. But instead, they're, they're pulling up for silly little things which then annoy supporters, managers and players. And I think it's a common sense element that's missing a lot of the time. Playing devil's advocate, I think probably most referees would say that they have played the game, albeit not at the level that you guys have played it at, that they haven't been good enough to be players, so they've become referees. So well, they understand it to that extent. Yeah, but you, you, they, 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 how many times do you see it on the Saturday afternoon when the referee is given a bad decision for a corner kick? The ball's knocked him from the corner and they give a free kick against a foul on the goalkeeper. And you think, wondering, well, what's that all about? And everybody knows it's because he's made a cock up in the first, in the first instance. Um, I just think that, that um, for, me, for me, 20 years ago, when all this money's coming into the game, players, young players who do not who make it as a footballer, professional footballer, but have been involved at a club until 21, 22, they could train them for five years, four years, wherever it needs to be done. To, to get the best that we can possibly get in refereeing. Now, a former colleague of mine who, who went down that route, as soon as he was getting to a certain level, was snubbed by other referees and linesmen. Whenever he turned up to a game, they were snubbing him because they didn't want ex-pros being involved. And as I said earlier, you know, we're probably the only sport that doesn't have ex-pros in charge of the games that, that's going on out there. That could still happen, though, couldn't it? Well, I'd like to think it would happen. I'd like, I'd like to think that... The people who run our game, who once again, a lot of them haven't been involved in the game, um, can see that that's got to be the way forward to try and eliminate um, you know, the mistakes that, that you see every week on TV. So for you, you've obviously got very strong views about refereeing, the way, the way it's going. Are the standards better than when you played or worse? Um, some are, some aren't. Uh, there's some good referees, don't get me wrong, and there's some... And there's some bad ones. There's some that get promoted far, far too early. There is a, a shortage of referees up and down the country for, um, for, for not, not in the professional ranks. So obviously that's going to have a knock-on effect of people coming through. But, um, you know, you're seeing it every Saturday afternoon, every Sunday, Monday morning in the press. Managers of all levels are complaining about the standard of refereeing. Now... That's been going on for years and nothing's ever been done about it. I went to Portugal for the Football League meeting three or four years ago. 
and the Exeter chairman stood up and went through six or seven things of his pet eights in football, which was one, taking the throwing from the wrong position, players not being 10 yards from the free kick, and so on and so on. Little things like that, we still become a pet eight. And the head of refereeing was at that meeting, and people were asking questions. But the one question that should have been asked and said to the guy was, well, it's a referee's decision on the, on, on the pitch, and he disagreed, and I couldn't believe it. Because a referee referees the game. And a referee on that afternoon should be able to ensure that players take the throw-ins, free kicks, 10 yards from the ball, all them scenarios, because he's in charge. But, as I say, they just they, they don't they don't stamp it out. And one of the biggest pet hates when you're going about pet hates is watching premiership players, crowding referees, top international players, blasting referees from three yards away, giving obscene gestures to them verbally as well and them doing nothing about it. And you only have to go and look at rugby union with six foot five, big, strong men who listen to the referee. I believe that, you know, if referees want to be really strong, they should send a few of these top Premier League players off the field of play and guarantee you now the managers of that club, because the players are getting suspended, would soon clamp down on it. But you're seeing it week in, week out, you see it with the Chelsea players only a few weeks ago against Sunderland. They're getting round the referee, they're looking for penalty kicks, they're looking for free kicks. And this, this goes down all the way through the roots of the game to the schoolboys on, on a Sunday morning at 9, 10, 11 years, 12 years of age. And it's all wrong. It could be argued that uh, that example, as you say, is the one that's followed by the kids in the parks or well, the it school is. fields. It is. I go, I go across my where I live, I go and watch Sunday morning football, walk my dog and I stand and I watch a game. And you see young kids emulating what they've seen on match of the day, live football, all the time, doing what they, doing what they see on the TV. Just taking the opposite view for a moment, uh, unlike when you, when you played, you now have not inconsiderably paid referees, they're professional referees, they work at it all week, they train hard. So at the top level in the Premier League, have you seen an improvement? Well, I think we have, we have got some top people at the very top. Your Webbs, your Clappenbergs, etc. four to five top notch uh, in the Premiership, who, who still get things wrong. And, and, and I'm not talking about getting things wrong because it's human nature to make a mistake as, as a human being. Um, but I think at the very top end, our referees are good, comparing around Europe. Um, but it's it's the new ones coming on the ladder down the bottom in the leagues in, in, in professional game, leagues two and one. You know, you only have to speak to anybody in football, and they'll say how poor referee linesmen. We've had linesmen. You know, we 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 had we played a game here two two three weeks ago against Newport County. Two goals disallowed. Both be played back on TV on TV. Both well on side. The little things like that that cost managers jobs, cost teams promotion, get infuriate supporters when you don't beat teams and stuff like that, all through bad mistakes, bad decisions. So Not once but twice. There isn't the depth of quality no, needed no, in, the, in, in no. the game. So, what can be done about that? Do you feel? Is that through the players you feel that uh, that can be repaired? Well, no, I think, I think that um, <clears throat> you should be able to. The managers and the LMA have been asking for this for years and years and years. The assessor's report should be seen by the football club of, of the two teams that have played in that particular game. And, you know, we always ask when we've had bad decisions, go against us in games where Liam Richardson, our assistant manager, always writes and sends off the DVD and gets a reply back from the assessor. And we've sat round about laughing at sort of certain feedback that's come back. Just an absolute joke, reading what we come back. Football clubs should be able to see what the assessor is seeing as well sitting up in the stand because they always stick together. I once managed Sheffield Wednesday away at Tranmere and there was an incident that led to the second goal for Tranmere. I went in there, I got the referee, two linesmen and assessor and, before, and a fourth official. And I knew after 20 seconds I wasted my time, so I just held my hands up and walked out. You can't speak to them because they all stick together. And everybody in football will tell you that. And until people start saying, well, this is wrong, that was wrong, from people assessing the referees, then it ain't going to improve.
Certainly lack of communication is a major criticism from the professional side of the game to, to, to referees. Well, it's been going on for years. It's not me. You, you yeah. just have to listen to, to premiership managers. And was that always the case, though? Um, well, when you were a player, could you, you, was a player, you could be on the pitch and you could talk to the referee and have a bit of banter and he'd give it. So I remember Roger Milford was a tremendous referee for, uh, for, for, for talking to players. You never see it today. You never see it. They're drilled when they come onto the pitch. That I'm in charge and you do what I say and you don't say it back to me. And like I said earlier in this discussion, you're seeing it on the Premiership games where they're blasting referees and officials and, and getting away with it. One of the things that you would accept it's a very difficult job, one of the difficulties for referees is the increase in technology Premier League level particularly, and the, the wonderful multi-views that we get of incidents, which can expose a referee as being unfortunate in making a mistake. Would you increase the use of technology in the game? I think it's a must. I think it's a must. I mean, the goal line technology has taken <clears throat> a long time to come in, but it's coming in at Premier League level. I think that um, you know, big key issue decisions, especially you know at Premiership again level. Um, are so key to 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 clubs that um, you know they all talk about a delay. It takes five ten seconds for somebody to watch the monitor, spread it to the referee. He's dived. It's over the line. Uh, it's handball, etc. It doesn't take long in today's technology, and it can only be beneficial to the referee. I said earlier once again in this discussion, rugby union have it, rugby league have it. Why can't and cricket? Why can't professional football? I think it'd be a massive tool for for the players. One of the biggest bugbears of mine is when players are rolling about on the pitch injured. For me, I bring a ruling in, like they do in rugby. Physio can come on, the game will play around them. I tell you now, the players won't be rolling about on the pitch. We've had, to, we've, had we've got too much of that diving, etc. Somebody dives in the in the penalty box. Uh, cheating, then this should be banned for six games. That should be the end of it. Once again, that would stop within one of them doing it because, you know, top clubs don't want to lose the best players. League Two clubs don't want to lose the best players. But if they're caught diving, cheating, then it should be bang, gone. Yeah. Technology can help with that in terms of trying te to cheat. So you know, it's been, it's been spoken about many a year. Get ex referee, get ex managers, get ex players on a panel on a Monday morning. Monday lunchtime, go through all the controversial incidents and make good but fair decisions and not be a closed shop that it is today on some of these uh, when, when clubs appeal about red cards. One difficulty, disparity, is that you'll get the, for instance now, Premier League have got the goal line technology, nobody else has got it for financial reasons. Yeah. You would think that if technology was extended, that would again be the case. So it's going to take a while before it filters down to, say, Chesterfield's level here. Well, it's, it's one of these things in the game. There's all this money coming into the game, into the English game. And um, surely it's beneficial for the whole of the game for X amount of money to be put to one side to be able to equip all football league grounds like the Premiership with goal line technology. It's not that it is expensive, but you know, it might be one season. I mean we give clubs now four seasons parachute money. Why not keep it at three and the fourth that would have gone out to that would, would equip it in, in the first season. Then everybody's got it. But you know the money that's spent on agents going abroad, the money going abroad to uh, agents abroad is, you know, I'm a great one of you football of being able to, to have channels so every football league club has a great training facilities, great youth policy, etc., etc., to make it the best so that young kids coming into the game at the grassroots can play. We could do the same with technology so everything's spot on. But instead, the rich get richer and the weaker get weaker. Uh, and... and I think every football supporter up and down the country would, would like to see everybody being given these opportunities. Strong views. Chris, I've just got one more question. Right. Would you be a referee? Would I be a referee? Um, I, I, I think I would love the opportunity. If I was a young player, 2021, 20, 22, and unfortunately I was told that uh, through injury I couldn't play professionally, 
I would love the opportunity to think, well, there's another avenue. I love the game. There's no opportunity there now. I can go on for three, four years and then become a professional referee. I'd love that opportunity.